Like it hasn't failed ever, so. So yeah. It didn't record once. Well, no, it recorded. It just didn't save it oh. for some reason. So. I've been taking the entire week off of social media. This is the first time I've, I've been on. You haven't, you haven't posted anything on Facebook? No, or, or no. Instagram. I decided to take a week off on oh. Sunday. I may not be seeing your Instagram stuff. Or something. Oh, it's because you don't use the app. I, I have it, but I don't check it that much. But, you know, like, I guess social media would be like, you know, uh, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter, Reddit, half, basically TikTok. anything where you can post, uh, you know, post anything. And I, I think that part of it was because it was like, um, let's see, I think, if, yeah, it was Sunday. And I was planning to go do something at a certain time. And they said, oh, you know, I still have like, whatever, half an hour. Let me just, uh, let me just be on my phone for a bit. And, and then I was on, I figured what it was, like Reddit or something like that. And then I looked up and there was like an hour that went by and I was like, the hell huh. this is nonsense like every every uh the only sort of uh thing that we have to spend that we can never get back is our time mm. you know i was thinking on the way over you, you ever see the they live uh movie where this guy puts on these glasses and then the advertisement says like obey or consume like you know the hidden message behind oh, it oh. Right, and, and yet yeah. somebody has money and says, "This is your God." On it, <laughs> you know. I, I was thinking about that, like maybe a different form of them, where you put on glasses, and then everybody has a number over their head, which is like how many years they have left <laughs> of life. You know, and you look at some young kids, and most of them will say like, you know, seventy, but a few of them might say ten or twelve. Yeah. You know, they might die of drugs or something like that. And it's like this is your finite amount of time that you have to make a mark or do something of some, you know, some significance in life. And um, I feel that I really haven't done anything. Well, you said that's seven years left. Um, according to my... Uh, according to your... I, I think according that, to my glasses. I think a part of it is because... Um, oh, 71. <laughs> oh, that would be... Uh, that would be... Uh, <laughs> Quite amazing, um, but I, I think that part of it is because I, uh, a number of years ago I, I wanted to do something that would sort of like maximize the amount of free time that I had, but then I realized like what is free time? Is is free time uh, time that you have uh, and unallocated? Is it uncalled for? Is it stuff that you are spending poorly? That you're not earning money during? Is that what it is? Uh, see, I'm not talking about. Uh, I think that we're so sort of. Um, but you have free time. You haven't worked. We're, you haven't we're planned. So you haven't in, offered to other people. We're so deep in the neoliberalist kind of mentality that we're always connecting time to money. But I don't think that's a, a value. Or you haven't. You haven't promised to other people. You haven't yeah, promised to visit grandma. Something like that. Yeah. Uh, and so, like, if you're so, I, I think that's a worthy goal, maybe, of maximizing free time as long as you have a utility side of that equation. But I don't think I ever did. And so all I did was I just um, devalued the time in the process. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it's the thing that's most disturbing, I think, to me is sometimes when I read these biographies of I don't know, like a nineteenth century author or you know some scientist or you know. Some, some person of note, right? And then I see all the remarkable things that they've done in their life. And that they died, you know, of like bubonic plague by like 38. <laughs> and then you think, before that. And you think to yourself, like, they did all of this stuff? Like, I sort of feel like I'm still. But they didn't have television or distracted. social media or they weren't distracted by. Some of them didn't even have books yet. You know? It's another sort of thing that I've. Realized is that hunter and gather and then invest in stuff. I don't think I'm good at anything, <laughs> to be quite honest. Like I think that I like uh, I've dipped my toes in mm. in many fields, but I don't think I'm exceptional or remarkable or, or in any of them. You know, I, I'm an adequate version of everything that I do, but nothing I've really sort of yeah. exceeded in. Um, I think that that's probably. 
what everybody realizes yeah. is that even is that you know we're, we're all kind of fronting if you will we all kind of believe that our, our time to shine is, is, is yet yet upon us and that we are going to get to this point of greatness which we to be honest with ourselves don't seem to be getting closer to um, there's this uh, I was reading this diary by um, there's uh, this Henry James and then there was a his sister uh, wrote this uh, diary and she had she had a hysteria it's like 18 <laughs> like, more like and she died of like breast cancer or something when she was like 38 or so and she was better than most of her life mm. and so it's a really sort of interesting kind of um, analysis or, or sort of, uh, interaction with time and with health and with well-being and with um, whether you utilize your time well is, is depending on what you value, right? You know, I mean, like, uh, I don't know. Is it like uh, some people maybe want to make money? Some people maybe want to, oh, I don't know, uh, explore the world, raise children or whatever. Um, I don't know. But one thing is that I don't want to do is uh, scroll through Facebook. <laughs> you know, that's, that's, a good that's, time that's to not on the well, I don't. Uh, I don't really do that. Yeah. I get that kind of alert when you post something once in a while, but not always. Uh -huh. I get an email that you posted something once in a while. You know, on, on a Nielsen, well, really Nielsen good. has done a, a lot of uh, studies on how much the average television viewer watches television. Yeah. They're not accounting for the non-television viewers like yeah. me. But, you know, if you have one, you turn it on. Yeah. Uh, the average American watches about five hours a day. That's probably right. They come home and they turn it on just like as background noise. Right. Even and if they're not watching it, they've got the news on, like, and maybe they've got a game show on. That's every day. Yeah. And so if you think about that, that's that's a, a, about a full-time job, 35 yeah. hours a week. 35 hours a week of television watching them. Except most people are doing something else while they're doing it, so they're eating while they're doing it, or they're reading, or they're well, all, all the knitting. Well, all the television really is, is it's, uh, it's the theater brought into the home, yeah. right? It's, um, but, but it doesn't require, or it certainly not demand, on your complete attention. Right, but... If you're in a theater... I, I, no, I, no I, I don't, that's not what I mean. I don't yeah. mean theater as a movie theater. Yeah. I mean... I'm trying to, I've been sort of thinking about like what is the allure of television or like what would some sort of scholar a, a thousand years from now, yeah. far removed from the technology, think about. Mm -hmm. And they'd say, well, you know, it's, it's kind of like uh, the Tennessee Williams kind of, you know, stage, stage theater, but it's brought through technology to the home. And that's really what television is, is it's people going to plays, yeah. to, to theatrical uh, place for about five hours a night, um, and I, I don't like it. Is that? It's an odd bill. It's a bunch of different. Yeah, it's, it's, it's the the question of whether that time well spent, I guess, is um, all up to the perception of the individual, right? Um, I I don't I don't know if everybody aspires to try to do. Things of value. I don't think so. Yeah. I don't think so. Do you, Do you think that there's a point in their life when they do and they give up on it, or do you think it? No, I think years? that there's people. I think you were you grew up in California in a different you know with okay. parents that had expectations that you would go to college and and learn and do something, and I think that um, that's not true everywhere. I think you'll get you'll grow up. You'll get a job that you can pay the rent with and buy food. Maybe I mean I I, I know that people have different desires yeah. and our idea of projecting our own desires onto other people mm -hmm. is fraught with error. Yeah, I mean our minds are the only ones we truly know, right? Mm -hmm. And so it's it's hard to sort of. Um, there's, there's also people with low self-esteem and don't think they're going to uh, to do any 
anything or want to hide, just as happy to work at a job where people leave them alone. Right. I, I, I th the, the low self-esteem thing is, is very interesting because it's like, um, I, I think that a lot of it is based on some kind of real world experiences, right? Mm -hmm. Like somebody tried really hard, let's you mean, say. You mean it's trauma has given people low self-esteem? Maybe it's parents. Well, maybe. I mean, mm -hmm. let, let's say that, you know, I don't know. Um, let, let, let's just presume that some people are, are naturally better at sports than others. Okay. okay? And that somebody who uh, doesn't have the right body type mm -hmm. really, really worked extremely hard. Yeah. And then found that somebody who had a different body type uh, works a lot less effort, and then when it came down yeah. to it, they were picked. Right. Well, and and uh, well, I can imagine how that could lead to everybody low self esteem. Everybody can't do everything. Right. You you have to keep an eye on. But what, what you what, can do. What I'm trying to say yeah. is that this is, is that is that this this kind of feeling of self esteem mm -hmm. it doesn't come from nowhere. No, it doesn't come from nowhere, but but. Um, Maybe it comes from focusing on what you can accomplish and not focusing what you and ignoring what you can't accomplish. Yeah, I, I the the, the counter to that, which is a sort of um, uh, what what are those things called? An, an adage I came up with today, and I don't want to forget, was um, it was, but I would say a, a sort of well balanced, balanced successful person. Mm -hmm is what they lack in competence they make up for in confidence okay right yeah i like that and so it's an interesting way of thinking about it you know um there are some people that like seem to be very confident but not very competent about yeah. it you know? Mm -hmm. and there's people that seem to be the opposite too right uh, it's, it's, it's interesting um yeah i i don't know i mean like it's really hard to solve assumingly successful as opposed to Right. Claiming success and not actually. I mean, what, but you know, like, what is it? I think we've gone over this before, like, what is success, right? Yeah. Like, if I. Well, success is what makes you happy. Is success isn't. I don't think you should judge success by someone else's opinion of. If what you want to do is get married and have children. I'm trying to find this one thing else. Then that would be success. But, if you want to be a teacher and you're the best teacher there is, that's success. Like, uh, well, well I, that, the thing that. Uh, makes me sort of question all of this. Ah, that was good. I said that success, this is what I said today, this week, is that success is all about learning how to be the right kind of foolish. <laughs> right? Okay. It's just about being foolish in the right kind of ways, right? Because, um, yeah, and I'll get back to the other thing in a few minutes. But, like, if you wanted to, let's say, uh, some risks are worth taking, some of them aren't, right? Mm. Like the risk of driving fast and not paying attention to the road yeah. is not worth taking. But the risk of maybe um, talking to somebody you're nervous about, yeah. or um, doing some type of business deal that you don't think that you think have a low chance of working yeah. out, but maybe have a huge, or, you know, or it's painting a painting, something like that. Those are all those yeah. are all similarly flu foolish yeah. acts, but it's a different kind of foolishness. And I think that like um, trying to sort of navigate where you choose to be foolish is part of uh, is, is part of the notion of success. Mm -hmm. Uh, but back to what I was talking about beforehand is that when you read the sort of the late papers, the, the private papers by Martin Luther King, 67, 68, right? He was immensely depressed. He thought that he had achieved almost nothing. Really? Yeah. And that, you know, he had, he had really sort of wasted his time and, um, you know, he, he won't be well, well known for, you know, it's just uh -huh. this really sort of bouts of, of serious depression. I mean, I'm Robin Williams, you know, same thing. Right? Yeah, well. And so, and so these, these people that we consider to be uh, very well accomplished, you know, if, if you had the, uh, the wealth and notoriety of Robin Williams, I mean, yeah. any of us would consider ourselves immensely impressed. Uh, uh, you know, or, or uh, Martin Luther King, right? Yeah. Uh, he, he will be known for the hundreds of years, yeah. you know, in, in, in high esteem. Um, but those people, um, after their success, you know, express deep doubts and in in um in it. I I don't know if that's a you know, it's, it's an interesting sort of thing. 
So, yeah, I'm there's also a difference between clinical depression and being depressed uh, because something horrendous happened to you or something horrible happened to you. You could oh, be depressed yeah, because yeah. you've been fired. If, if, if your wife dies, yeah, your of course, wife that's natural depression. But, right. but, yeah, but what's, yeah, again, what's success? And maybe Robin Williams didn't feel that fame was success. I, I think a part of it is... Maybe is, happiness would have been. There's all these other parts to it, like, I sort of felt that I, uh, I sort of felt like an imposter mm -hmm. for the first time this week on a number of computer things that yeah. I've done. And I think I'm actually pretty good at computers, but, but maybe that's just a uh, more confidence than yeah. confidence, if you will. Um, and that the only reason I think that is that I don't surround myself with people that are better than me. Yeah. <laughs> I know it's true, right? Yeah. Like if, if, you, uh, if you decided to do stand up but only went to coffee houses, then you might, you know, confuse yourself with the funniest man in the room because you're in the wrong rooms. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, maybe that's just kind of a um, not being foolish in the right way again, right? As, as I, need to, I need to dip my toes into rougher waters. Um, you know, it's, again, time does not... Yeah, you're really sounding depressed. No, I, I don't think it's depression. Maybe some ice cream. Oh, that's yeah. right. So, so uh, tell us a bit about this ice cream. Here. Well, because uh, I'm you the prestigious member, camera. prestigious member of the Television Academy, and uh, because of this pandemic that we're on, places can't actually have promotions and parties where they sell you, where they serve you. It's free. I mean, if you're a voter, uh, serve you promotional items from the show. So now they. Well, you haven't explained anything, and so so basically what happens is that. Shows will try to bribe, well, bribe the voters, voters but, but they can't bribe them with certain types of things. They can't give you anything, but they can feed you. So they invite you to parties um, where the stars of the show, they play a clip, there'll be a Q&A, &A, and then the stars of the show will work the room. They'll go from table to table where people are eating this lavish dinner and say hello. And even though presumably everyone, or plus a guest, in the room is in the industry, it's still a big deal to have a picture with Lily Tomlin or a picture with Jane Fonda or Robin Williams' autograph mm -hmm. and a fantastic dinner. And now that they can't have them this year because we're all quarantined. Okay, well, well that, this is what I fear is that your head is a little, they, little off. They've, they've, had, they've had them online and then they also give you some ice cream that you go pick up. In this case, Chris picked it up for us. So well, we're have some ice but, cream. But before we go further, I want you to talk about how Fox manages these, which is notoriously bad. Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. So, mm -hmm. so, so we're going to that, and, and maybe go to the one that was at the um, Museum of Television or Radio that we went oh, to. Oh yes, well, that. well, that was when they had an outside organization do it. When you have it done to the studio, once you're on the studio lot, the studio is in charge of everything. So even if you've rented the space for a party, you have to use their security people, their caterers, their waiters, their stage, their lighting people. But every once in a while, a show will have it somewhere else and they'll hire like a PR firm to put the event together. And almost always, those events go south as, as, especially, as especially the case, I don't remember the name of the show, but you went with me. Um, oh, no, it's Cosmos. Cosmos with Neil deGrasse Tyson. Correct. Who was there? He was going to do a little Q and A, the screening mm -hmm. and the party, and they had in a seventy seat theater, but they had accepted all the RSVPs, which were, I don't know, five hundred. There were people, right. there were more people online. There were more people waiting to park than would fit in the theater. So with seventy seats, you can only accept thirty five RSVPs. I think a bicycle there plus yeah. The, Plus, they, um, they had probably reserved some seats for guests or whatever. So, mm -hmm. effectively, they took 500 RSVPs for 25 seats. And they didn't tell everyone they were booked. And everyone showed up. And it wasn't a riot, but there were people just standing outside complaining. And, of course, the show did not get nominated. Or the other famous one, the Grammy Award. Mm -hmm. Where they invited everyone to a dinner. Yeah, the, well, well, this first, was, let's go back to this. Yeah. So, so the first one, basically the Museum of Television and Radio, yeah, is, right. is a, 75 it's, it's about the, the size of a small independent theater. Yeah. And there were hundreds and hundreds of people outside. 
you know, like like a megaplex kind, yeah. of, kind of crowd. Yeah. Because you know, no one had been told they weren't getting it. No right. one had said, sorry, we're booked. Right. Um, they could have accepted no RSVPs and still would have had 75. We got in. Well, we got into the lobby. And the food was good. Yeah, the food was okay. Mm -hmm. um, the most famous one, and why they never got nominated, was the Grammy Awards. And the Grammy Award party for this, for the, the Academy, was a Q&A with the producer, mm -hmm. and then a performance, a short concert by Stevie Wonder. Oh, wow. Stevie Wonder. That's a big name. Yeah. And at a theater in Hollywood, and we all went there, and uh, again, there were 250 with guests, so maybe 500 Did people he get lost? in the theater. What? Did he get lost on a wheel? No, it worse than that. And um, the producer comes out and he starts to talk and he has someone interviewing him. And he was such a pompous ass, he went on and on. And behind, there's two more seats for Stevie and somebody else. And Stevie's kind of iconic electric piano on the right. side where he's going to perform. And it went on and on, and people are bored and thinking, where's dinner? And it went on an hour, then an hour and a half, and two hours with this producer, this pompous piece of shit, talking about how he never gets nominated. And then there's people on the stage kind of waving, the stage manager and people like that waving, hurry up. And it turned out he had run over the time they had allotted for the theater, and they didn't have time for Stevie to perform. So we're just going to have Stevie come out and wave. So everyone that's out there for two hours being lectured that we should have nominated this producer, who was such a fine producer, he didn't watch the clock. Stevie came out, and because of because he can't see, you can't really read his body language. And they whispered something to him, and he kind of waved a little bit and looked confused, but you don't know what's going on. And then he left, and that was it. We had come to see Stevie Wonder, not this guy well, whose well, name you know, I can't even remember. I mean, and wait, it gets worse. The caterer hadn't shown up. So we were promised a dinner and a concert by Stevie Wonder, and we didn't get either one. And I guess he's such a fine producer that at no point during it did he go, did someone from him or his staff go, gee, shouldn't they be setting up tables and chairs at some point? Mm -hmm. And so people drove all the way to, to wherever they were going from wherever they were for a Stevie Wonder concert and a dinner and didn't get it. Needless to say, the guy wasn't nominated and will never get a, a nomination. There were complaints to the Academy that night. And I saw about half those people, not half those people, so quite a few of those people online at Arby's on the way home because mm -hmm. no one had eaten. So that's when, <laughs> if he had done nothing, there's a chance he might have gotten nominated. But because he pissed off 500 people, he will never see a nomination ever, mm -hmm. ever. Notoriously, so, 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 so Stevie yeah. come on and say, he waved and they, they walked said, off. Um, Sorry, you don't have enough time to perform. He said something like, you know, he's been wasting most of his time glorifying days long gone behind. <laughs> and he said, you know, they've been, they've been spending most of their time looking at that. Do you want you want the cup okay. or the cone? Um, what which one do you want? Uh, maybe I'll. I mean, I'll have the cone. You can have the cup. I'll okay. put a little ice cream in this, and then you can you. you can have that. Sure. There we go. Okay, cool. So we're gonna do this thing. So, so it's not the full lightless meal. So hold on, but what flavor is this? I don't. You got it. Who could go? No, no, no. It, it it was a specific flavor. It wasn't that. It wasn't a choice. Does it change? Mm. They'll probably get to give you what they have a lot of. No, it was inspired by something. Or something. Mm -hmm. This is my one. Mm -hmm. it, it has um. It, this is the the, uh, the the allergy plus. I don't know. Yeah. Well, normally there's a lavish okay. dinner. This time we get some ice cream. That's fine. Which Chris had to go pick up. That's fine. But I was out on... I would have picked it up, but... Your car. My car is a flat. Um, I might have had a flat for two weeks. Probably. Right? Um, I've been paying AAA for 30 years. Mm -hmm. It's about time I collected on that, so tomorrow I'll call them. I walked down Third Street to go to this place. Packed people eating outside. At this place? No, at the restaurant next no. door. And I mean, I guess it goes back to the other thing. Like, why? Why are people doing that? Now, like, would, would you even consider going to eat at a restaurant right now? No. No. I'm not thrilled about eating at home. This isn't bad. It's not bad. Yeah. I'm just just chocolate and vanilla, maybe. Mm. Why does it drop it in the There's something else in here. Like gingerbread or something. What? It's like gingerbread in oh. here. 
Or maybe it's cardboard, I don't know. Yeah, it does have a little one. Yeah. It recycle taste to it. So my computer yeah. that I've been waiting three weeks for? Mm -hmm. Four weeks now. Every time uh, it's sitting on a dock in Incheon, Korea. Oh, huh. And they just keep moving the date of delivery down. Well, you saw what happened with uh, this week. Is that I got a small package that yeah that took 101 days to get here from China, which was about walking speed. Oh. And it went to Kyrgyzstan first, which is over in the Caucasus Mountain, the Caucasus area. Yeah. Then it went to Vietnam, and came all and and, they, and you know they had all these stickers on top of each other. And I was able to peel the sticker off and. Mm -hmm. See, I'm not doing social media, I'm still wasting my time. And I was able to like look up the, the addresses to see where like it got. It's very interesting. Found it on Google Plus? Yeah. From uh, Google? Yeah. Google Maps. Google Maps. Google Plus has been gone for like yeah. eight years. You know? it's, it's way so I a class action settlement, did you get that? Oh, I did. And yeah, if you do some paperwork, you'll get like a, like a $2 check or something. No, I don't know why though. I couldn't figure out what it was. I don't know. I mean, They had done wrong except be uninteresting. I'll cash that. Why not? Yeah. Um, I don't know. I'm trying to see if there's anything else that, that happened this week. Um, let's see. So I guess mine could still go to Vietnam. It's already been in China and Korea. Yeah. It, it's weird that our factories go more places than we have. The original date was, it's going all the places that if you were in the um, the 27th Airborne Division mm -hmm. in World War II, it's been in uh, two places in China. And now it's in Korea, and maybe it is off to uh, Guam. I, I made a more offensive joke, but uh, I don't remember what it was. You, you suggested that, and then I, I did something much more offensive. Oh, did you? Should I look it up, or I should we maybe you're, not commit to it? Was. No, I mean, I think it, it, I'm looking it up right now. It's around right here. Uh, and it was, let's see. Where Donald Trump's wives are from. It, it was... Um, Check the catalog. It was. Oh, that was very funny. But it was. Um, I, I don't think Let's so. See. Oh, that's very funny. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. No, 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 no. no. That, 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 that's. Uh, it's, well, it's, it's not funny, it's, it's actually just racist. So, <laughs> oh, did I say it? No, no, no. no. Should, I, should I find it? No, 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 it's not worth it. Okay. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I, I mean, the, the statement was, when you're talking about, oh, it goes to, you know, Kyrgyzstan and China and Vietnam, and you say, oh, that's just a typical customer service call. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's just overtly racist. It's well, just, I don't know if that's a racist as much as it is true. I'm offended by it. Okay. Yeah. I, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm kind of a walking. That's where, if there's something wrong with this computer, that's where I'm going to have to call mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's what, well, that was the joke that you made. There's a few other things that happened this week. Uh, I'm just trying to see, we no text each other all it. week long, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't think okay. so. Uh, Sumner Redstone. Oh, Sumner Redstone died. But what I wanted to do was mm -hmm. go over uh, la last week. Um, you, it, it turns out that I, that for the longest time you thought that I had been like a DSM level yes, hoarder. Yes, I thought you were a hoarder because, um, what's his name, whose name I keep forgetting? Uh, Vladimir. Vladimir yeah, we don't have gave to me the impression. Talks people. What? Yeah. Um, gave me the impression that you were a hoarder. Yeah. And, you know, it's, I, I think that the more proper thing is to say that I don't, I, I was looking up like what is the difference between let's say uh, you know, what makes somebody a hoarder, and I, if people haven't seen this, it's really remarkable. Uh, I bet people have. Maybe you've seen cars where like it's just full of stuff and only has enough s space for the driver to get in, and it just looks like that they have like oh yeah I've seen that papers and wrappers. They kind of uh... and it just has this one carving out place for the person. <coughs> So so, so so that is an example of somebody with a serious sort of a psychiatric hoarding problem, right? Uh, just just, uh, just extensive. Or maybe you have somebody who uh, you, you'd walk into 
their apartment or their place of living, yeah. and then they have boxes on top of uh, stacked up to yeah. the ceiling. I've seen that. Um, and they only have sort of like paths of cleanliness. Well, I, I didn't think you were that bad. I have the impression that everything you ha had was still laying there somewhere. So <laughs> if you had ordered something, the box was still there and the crap was still there, and that you weren't throwing out old computers. Well, or garbage. And, and so I, I think that uh, we, we talked about this a, a little bit more is that there's a there's a sentimentality to, to the nature of hoarding is that why, why aren't these people tossing these things into the garbage you, you might ask yourself it's because um, let's just say that uh, some form of sentimentalism Let, let's just say that oh I don't know a wedding ring right, right? You know, that, that is something that most people right. agree upon that it's not like oh, oh yearbook. What, what's this band of metal doing on my finger let me toss it into the garbage you know, it, you know, that's the extreme the other way. But if, if you can imagine that somebody has that level of sentiment, sentimentality with like this napkin and say, oh, this was a time that I went and picked up that ice cream from Wonderlust. Do you, think they're, fun. Yeah. Do you think they're that attached to that? Yes. <coughs> or it's just comfort being surrounded by things? I think it's... You think they can identify all no, this stuff that's I, in I, it? I think that there is some all type newspapers of... newspapers and magazines and... Um, I think, you know, it smothers their feelings, if you, if you will, it, it unfolds themselves of, of um, you know, the, the, um, it, the constraining nature of it is comforting. Um, and I, I know that some people struggle with this in their entire lives. Yeah. It's, it's really, it's really a problem. Um, you know, I, I think that. And just like the liquor stores enable alcoholism, these yeah. these self storage places, yeah, uh, you know, enable the hoarders. Yes, and I know and, some of them, and you know some of them too, where uh, their entire place is just packed to the uh, to the rafters, and then they've still got two more storage places. And and you can you so so you, so you can find these auction sites, yeah, where. Um, People will auction off all of the stuff that was, that's in storage. Yeah, unsealing so sometimes. Well, well, there's photographs. Yeah. And so these are photographs, is, and and so this is what people are paying what sixty dollars a month for. Yeah. The store in there. And, and it's just nonsense. But I I've seen some of these. You know, I'm talking about one mm -hmm. one person, and it's just, it's just garbage, and it's not even it, it maybe some of these things at a brief window of being worth pennies. Uh, he had uh, boxes and boxes of blank cassette tapes. But that's which, the place of twenty years ago. You maybe you could have gotten a few cents a piece, and and he had uh, all his old school books. But then everybody else's school books. So there's more of an attachment yeah. Than, yeah. than anything. And um, broken tables, like a chair he I, was going to fix. I, have you ever regretted throwing things away? Every once in a while, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think that's natural. But that, that goes away pretty quickly. Yeah. But normally, I, I, I'm throwing things away only because of its actual value, its monetary value, as opposed to its sentimental value. I can't think of anything I throw well, away thinking, oh, I'd like to have that gift from whoever. Well, when, we started, well, yeah. when, when I started doing the eBay thing, I mean, I, I was kicking myself because of all of these yeah. stuff. You know, and, and this sort of says that I don't think I have one problem at all. Because we're all, so like, you know, when we moved into our new building, let's say in August, yeah. the old tenant said, do you want a box of this stuff? Yeah. Where I found out that this stuff, like, is like a thousand dollars worth of stuff on yeah. eBay. And at the time, I said, what, what do I want that stuff? Right? right? And, and there, were, there were many sort of other things where I took stuff e-waste, totally functional things. Yeah. And then I'm like, and then I look at it, I'm like, that was thousands of dollars. Like, what, yeah. what did I do? And or, so like, I, if I had a hoarding problem, I don't think that... Yeah. That would have happened. Yeah, or I've thrown out m more ridiculous stuff. Like, ever, even since I've been in, in college, I've uh -huh. been in movie premieres. Uh -huh. And uh, things happen. like that. And there's programs. Yeah. And uh, after, you know, I kept it for a day and then threw it in the garbage. Uh -huh. And now, if I had some of these things I had gone to, if I had the premiere program from... Back to the Future. Back to the Future, I right. think that was what I went to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that it probably is worth something. Oh, yeah, well, yeah. so, yeah. But, you know, but I would have had to save it for 35 years. Yeah. Um, 
I, I guess that um, maybe if that's a strategy. But that's just, not. But I don't go. Oh, I just like to have that depraement. I think I'd like to have it because it might be worth fifty dollars. Right. To right. sell on eBay, not to. But but I mean, th this goes back to our time thing, right? Yeah. Is that you can always make more money, but you can't make more time. And so, yeah. is, is, it, is it even worth it at that point? Right. I would have had to drag it from place to place, and yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, I'm, the reason I'm not, the reason I'm selling things on eBay isn't to make the, the, the $10 or whatever. Yeah. I mean, okay, that's part of it. I like, I like that part of it. Um, it's more about liberating myself of, of these objects that yeah. I have to have, just strewn around that I don't want to be associated with anymore. I just don't want to have. I had, I had one of the things I threw out this week during my, my last two weeks of just cleaning stuff. And, mm -hmm. and I don't know why I said, I had uh, met on a TV show called The Jersey. Mm-hmm. And it might have been, maybe it was 2002. And when you meet on a, a show and then you want to come back, you you meet for the first time and come back and meet again. And they give you, <clears throat> now it would be downloaded. And in between it would have been a DVD. But in 2002 or 2004 or whatever it was, mm -hmm. they gave you VHS tapes oh. of the entire, so there were 48 VHS tapes of this show, The Jersey. And not only... Could I not believe I still have them in the closet? I can't believe I didn't throw them out on the way home. I can't believe because I don't. I'm sure I never watched. Well, well no, yeah, but I mean, yeah. that's not a real memorable show. No, no, no. no. I, that's why I. I like if, I have if no it was idea friends, why I saved then it. Sell it yeah. Right, right. But I have no idea why I saved it. Mm -hmm. I, I have no idea why I saved it then, or it had no value then, and it still has no value. So and like, it didn't. It didn't look like it was going to have value in the future. Well, this is the interesting. So like somehow. Uh, you you decided to bring that into the house. Yeah, I mean, well, technically, I was supposed to watch them, but I I was never really going to watch forty eight episodes of this show. Um, so I, I brought it in, and then twenty episodes I threw them out. I don't know. I I should have tossed it out in the studio lot while I was still there. They handed these to me, and after I got out of the office, I should have dumped it. But. Uh, Needless to say, I didn't get the, the job. And you do have a, a large amount of books. I do have a large amount of books. I don't know what, what I'm doing with those. Yeah. I think I'm going to get my books down to just what fits on bookshelves. So, and stop the piling on the floor. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. It, you, so, but I'm not going to throw them away. There, there's the there's a room that we never go to uh, here, which... Uh, in yeah, this let's house. go. No, no, let's not. There's, <laughs> there's other junk in there now, too. <laughs> okay, so, so I'll have to describe it. And so it's it's uh, the entire face of the wall, which has uh, it's shelves a, of books. No, I'm it's a, this. okay. And um, normally, what happens is that the bookshelves are maybe this high, but most books are this high, and so you can stack books on top, like stack, 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 mm. and that's there. And so basically, it's a wall of books where you can't see the back part of the shelf, and then beyond that, there is more in front. Of books on top, and uh, I've heard that he's read at least one of them. Yeah. So, and there's some piled up on the floor. Yeah, and, it's, and there's books behind the books. It's an entire wall of books. I don't know. It's a few thousand. Like books. if you want to, and I should probably just save the ones I want, or may one day read, or the ones that look pretty, and then give the rest to a library or charity or like in the French Revolutionary yeah. War. This is before the uh, Napoleon the Third mm. made all the thoroughfares, you know, yeah. these narrow streets that can be barricaded. Mm. And so, if we ever have any civil, you know, okay. revolutionary war breakout, then you could barricade the street out there or, with the books that you have. Or if there's a flooding, I can instead of yeah, you could do that too. Sure, sure, sure. <laughs> um, but at the time when when I started to read, things weren't online. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't, uh, you know. I got rid of all the dictionaries and thesauruses and mm -hmm. and uh, things you look at all the re the all the referential ones. Yeah, yeah, I got rid of all that. And so, so the books that in your do you buy most of them new? Or like well, I haven't bought because it's all everything is digital now. I haven't bought a new book in forever. Uh, These are all just there since I stopped getting books <coughs> when bookstores closed. I see. Yeah. I see. These are all just still there. So some of these could have um, a value. Yeah. I also have a lot of books that are signed by the authors because mm -hmm. people are friends of mine. Or, I don't, Generally yeah. speaking, so... so yeah, once they're in, in, said to me... No, not, no, you know, no, no, not about that. It's that 
they are, okay, so what I found out about this mm-hmm. is that if there are mass paperback books yeah. that are s- still relatively kind of in print, mm-hmm. their value is four or five bucks. It's just not oh, it's even that much. I thought you were going to say like 10 cents. No, no, no. It's, it's about four or five. No, I have a lot of, most of these and are then, hardcover. Most of them are you, kept are hardcover. Well, well, in the USPS, so long as it still exists. Yeah. Um, you, there's something called media mail. Yes, you can sell them cheaper. And so, uh, basically, you it's about two or three dollars, depending on how far it needs to go yeah. to sell. You know, it's not an arbitrary yeah. book. And so I, I got I got this big lugging book about this big that I sold off for like three dollars shipping. Yeah, right. the media mail. Um, that that includes uh, DVDs too. Yes, it does. Yeah, but DVDs, I mean, you can and just, it's technically just, film and tape. Right. Yeah. Kind of media. True. Yeah. And so, like, uh, uh, various books that I, I, I was going through my shelf trying to find if there's a bunch of things that have any value. Most of them, the answer is no. Yeah. Um, I don't know that I have a lot of books with value. And, and I think that some of it is that, like, uh, the demand is just quite low. Yeah. And so, some of those... Like old record albums. Yeah. Yeah, something like that. Like, if... If you had had, oh, I don't know. Um, the Beatles, uh, Meet the Beatles. No, that, that, that's quite... Oh, because it was the biggest sell, seller. Yes, yeah, a big seller. I'm not talking about that. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm talking about if you had, oh, I don't know, um, just something like, uh, let, let's just say... Uh, um, Rudy Valley. Not even. Mm-hmm. Not even. I would say something like, may, maybe some, if you had a record of some uh, uh, local LA punk group. Mm-hmm from like 1979, yeah. right? And it was still wrapped, right? Yeah. And, and then you put that up there, and then, you know, like, ostensibly, you might have the, the best version of that record yeah. in the world in your hands. I mean, like, you know, there's yeah. not a lot of people the only. <laughs> right? And so you'd post that, and maybe uh, a year and a half from now, mm-hmm. somebody will come by and say, oh my God, that's, I've been looking for that one. You know, yeah. I've been looking everywhere for it. And so it's, it's, the, it's called the long tail, right? And um, because if you were to do a graphic, you know, so, so it's uh, of a value that it's worth bothering yeah. for, but a time horizon that's completely unknown. Right? Yeah. I have a garage filled with record albums that have no value. That yeah. out there? Yeah. Oh, I have no idea that. Well, I, I have a couple hundred probably. Yeah, so, so he has the shed out there, and I and I thought that you. Just I bet they're ruined by now because it leaks. I, do you ever go in there? No, it's all musty. Not yeah. since I put that stuff in when I moved in. It's all dirty. You should you should uh? I know I should have taken better care of it. Well, still, not only but gives you, me a good excuse to toss them all in the garbage. You should do something with that space. Yeah, it's too brown. Um. No, I mean, what you should do is uh. That that could be a COVID thing, <laughs> and so and so basically, um, did you get sunshine upon it? You get sunshine on it? No. You don't. So even if you bust windows, no, you wouldn't need sun. No, not back there, no. Because no. there's uh, forty foot hedges around. Does the ceiling get anything? Uh, water. No, there's water. Yeah. Be- because you know, uh, s- sunshine is the best killer of mold. Oh. So. Um, if well, there's got to be mold in there. I would assume so. Yeah. I mean, you know, uh, c- kind of warm darkness is where it what lives. Yeah. So, if you wanted to, I, I would keep an eye on it and see how much sunlight you actually get. Yeah. And if it looks like you get something, you could turn it into um, anything. Turn, turn it into an aviary if you want to. Like a- anything that you think of, right? Um, you can just. Um, it leaks. It, yeah, I understand. Mm. Um, so, I mean, you could just like, let's say, take away everything but the, but the frame, yeah. right? And then just uh, put something else over the frame, right? Put, I don't know, some kind of, oh, I have something to put. I think it's a, uh, is it? I, I need to uh, get it for you real quick. I, I don't know what, what we're, how we're doing, how we see. What? This is a. Uh, it doesn't actually say. But my, my mother's on there. No? Is she? Is mom watching? Yes. Oh, this is this is Anne. Let's 
see who's checking in. So I know you had an acid problem, and I, I bought these for my own garden before I realized there was a caterpillar problem. And these things are. Um, oh, that works. Yeah. And so this is a sticky tape, and yeah. the yellow supposedly attracts them. So maybe you can find a place. To, I'm just giving you one for yeah. now. I've got if a few. It works. I'll get a bunch. So we I pull this off and hang it in there. You you pull it off and then you hang it where you think that they are. Yeah. And then see if they stick it's, to it. I think it's that hedge over there. Uh -huh. And it's got all those white bugs on it. Right. And this will attract them. But this only attracts aphids. No. It, it, supposedly, a lot of flying insects are attracted to yellow. Okay. And so that, that gets fruit flies and the, the big sort of horse flies. Does it get, I think I have wasps. I don't know. Yeah, we can we'll find run out. a series of tests. Yeah, you find out. Thank so, you, I'll, so be, uh, I'll be reporting back next Friday. Yeah, I've, I've got quite a few of them because, you know, as it turned out that I didn't actually have a flying insect problem. Mm -hmm. And so I, I, I only have two of them up and they, they seem to be effective. So I've got more. And yeah, they're pretty cheap. So I, I recommend it. You have to try them. It, I know, they're pretty, but like, you know, okay, right? Cheese like. Yeah. yeah. Cheese food. Yeah. Let's see, any, anything else that happened? Um, I I tried a new pair of chips. I, uh, yeah, how was it? Yeah. Okay, it's okay. I mean, uh, <laughs> I did some fine cooking last night. Oh, what'd you do? I made um, braised chicken. Oh, that's interesting. So you, you brown it in the frying pan, mm -hmm. then you drain off the fat, and then you add uh, lemon and olive oil and seasoning and i added some white wine but the alcohol cooks off and then i added peppers and um uh, uh peppers and carrots and uh what are those things like onions um, the green onions no 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 suddenly i got a, a mental what work against uh, okay so, so, so shallots oh shallots yeah. and mushrooms mm -hmm. and uh, celery and it cooked up uh, delicious chicken and vegetables. That sounds with a wonderful good. flavor. A lot of seasoning. That's lovely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, now I, I don't. I've been uh, using some of my herb gardens now that. Uh, the, oh, you now have, that I you have the it. basil. I use the basil's there. Mm -hmm. So I've got I've got basil. Uh, I've got mint, dill, oregano, thyme. I think that's it. Did you did you use the basil? Did you get leaves? Did yeah, like I have basil. How is it? Oh, it's it's, yeah. it's basil. It's, yeah. it's quite nice. Yeah. It's very good. Yeah. Um, and I also have a few other things I just haven't harvested yet, but it's okay. You know, I kind of kind of enjoy looking at it. And uh, are you cooking, or you're just adding it to things that are already? Uh, that you I, get I, I didn't meal, I didn't meal prep, and so I, I use the uh, I use the Insta Pot that I have. Oh, and I'll be. I, I guess that up next I need to cook curry. Because I've got a bunch of curry oh. ingredients I need to go do. And you, you just bought some curry. Right, yeah, that's what I bought for. Yeah, it's really easy to make. That sure. shows you're only cooking vegetables, so you're only cooking various. Or are you using tofu? Sometimes. Or side pan? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, I, I yeah. try, try to be vegan if I can. Um, it's just, I don't know, like it, it, it's, it's not for the health reason. I mean, it's not for like the. Uh, uh, the moral reasons yeah. necessarily. I just find that it, um, I have a, it, it's easier for me to sleep. I have more energy. Uh, when you eat less dairy? Well, right, less dairy, less well, my ice cream should be. Should yeah, be. I guess that's kind yeah. of on it. Yeah, it helps stabilize my mood a little bit better. I, I just, it just seems to um, just be an overall better experience for me. And, um, this isn't to detract from anyone who, who wants to eat meat. I think that's fine if yeah. that's what you want to do. But I mean, I, I think everybody should, should experiment. I, uh, there was this uh, lecture I was listening to on a podcast. It sounded really wacky. This woman talked about how um, the EMR from our wireless devices could be affecting our sleep patterns. And she's a she's like an actual, um, you know, maniac. No, no, no. She, she's she, she's uh, you know from one of those uh, top universities or like Cornell or something like that. She's got a medical degree. You know, always like you know, she 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 reaches all the check marks and then you're like and she's like you know I'm not going to claim that that um, this works for you. I'm just going to say that's an easy and cheap thing that you can try. So I said, oh, why not? Taking your phone away from you. Well, 
like um, basically shutting, shutting off the Wi-Fi. And uh, yeah, you're taking phones away and seeing if like, you know, you have an easier time sleeping. Did it work? Um, I do, right now it is working, but I do not have a, uh, a way to do a double blind right now. So, oh, that's right. so it could be yeah. placebo. So in, until I can drive away where uh, I will not know whether the things are, are off or away, and I have to figure that out. Then, then I'll have to sort of trace and then see if I have perception of the ones. Well, did you find yourself reading your phone till you fell asleep? Is that what was going on? Or waking up at night to check it? Or that, That's not what this... Uh, she says the way you're doing it. The way it, it, yeah, the, the, this doctor says that. Yeah, there's... Is that uh, the actual levels of EMR can affect yeah. the... the, the uh, the, 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 the release the release of certain chemicals uh, for uh, that allow people to fall asleep. So you and, literally and, turned off the Wi-Fi mm -hmm. in your at your place. Yeah. And and she said that uh, that you know her, her she has a lab and everything like that. Yeah. And her, her lab has, has shown how you know if you increase the the actual EMR that these chemicals do not sort of like you know the, the chemistry does change. Yeah. You know and that she said like no. We, we, uh, but you know you have to do like some kind of large epidemiological study to see if this is true in humans or not. And she's like, I don't have resources, or you know, I, I can't do that, so yeah. I can't state this. But um, she said that you know, in sort of some recommendations to people, they say that they, you know, that they're doing it and getting good results. So I know I've had trouble falling asleep, and so yeah, I thought that maybe that would. But you be you've had Wi-Fi for twenty years, and you've been able to. I, I, uh, I mean, I've always kind of had trouble falling asleep, yeah. but I don't know. I mean, it, again, it's not—it's a very cheap thing to try. Right. You know, this this, this isn't like an anti-vax thing where yeah. I'm saying like this life-saving drug yeah. uh, might cause some harm, so I'm not going to yeah. do it, right? This this is something that like um, it's just you alone in your apartment with the light yeah, turned off. Yeah, yeah. I mean, what? Like there's no consequences here, so yeah. so it's mine as well. Um, and if it's goofy and wacky, then okay, fine, who cares, yeah. right? Um, is, it, is it to the point of if it's turned off, you should notice a difference right away, or it, it, that wasn't elaborated upon? Yeah. Uh, I don't think it's a problem for you because well, where's your Wi-Fi? Uh, it's in there, but then it, there's a repeater over here. Oh uh, yeah, but but you're, you're not like. So, so for some people, like, they'll, uh, they, they said, like, you know, they, they'll sleep, like, right here, yeah. and then their laptop is right here. Well, my right. phone is probably right the there. The phone and all those, yeah. and all those electronic devices yeah. are super close to their heads. Yeah, I'm sure mine is. And, and they say, you know, just try to, try, try to move it away. Yeah. Then make sure it's not, not nearby, and see if, it, see, see if there's a good yeah. yeah. And, uh, you know, I, again, it, maybe it's, it's hook, it's hokum, yeah. maybe it's just a bunch of nonsense, but, like, it's, it's really easy to try. Yeah. And I mean, also like, even if it's nonsense like that, keeping your phone out of reach is probably better for you if you're trying to go to sleep. Right? Yeah. So. Um, but it's also everyone's alarm clock and everyone's. Uh, yes, but I, I I can hear it if it's yeah. if it's you know all the way right, here, right, right. But I can't reach it. Right? That's the whole point. Um. And and I, I think that. Uh, some people like I've been talking to do you remember Vinny? I think you might have met yes, him. Yes, where I'm gonna Vinny. He disappeared. He's, he's in Glendale. So yeah, he's basically disappeared. He he moved to Glendale? Yeah. Because of the pandemic? No, 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 no. He was just he just moved to Glendale. Did so he, did he graduate? Yeah, no, he's still done with the home school. Yeah. But yeah, he moved to Glendale. And um he was just sort of talking to me about how he was struggling with sleeping and all these things like this and and basically, like, everything that he says, I'm like, you need to get more exercise. And I don't mean serious. I mean, like, just walking for half an hour a day. do anything. And I think that a lot of us have... have, yeah. have especially uh, now. Especially and, and in the last I'm not, five months. I'm not talking about, like, a gym membership. I'm just talking about, as we went about our regular days, mm -hmm. we would do uh, much, much more exercise than we do now. Yeah. And so all of these kinds of things where... He's talking about, oh man, I can't, can't go to sleep, um, I'm, uh, my, I'm getting headaches, and blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, Just going shopping. You know, yes. I'm depressed all the time. 
Um, you know, I have all these things. And, and I'm like, let's go back to William James, right? Who, who basically, he was struggling with depression for a long time. One of his insights was, he was saying stuff like, you know, um, if you do the, I, I, I mean, he's, he's a much more eloquent writer than I'm going to put it. But basically, if you do the acts of uh, a healthy person, then um, the worst that's going to happen is nothing. Mm -hmm. And the most that's going to happen is it's going to help you. Yeah. Right? So uh, if you're trying to get better, then it's best to sort of it, fake to make it if you will, right? Yes. Is, is smile at everybody, um, you know, uh, be delightful, uh, uh, put, put on a face of happiness, you know, <laughs> wake up early, do some exercise. And, um, you know, and he said that when he, when he did it, it, it really helped him out. Yeah. Um, and, you know, and I think that, like, uh, it, it, basically all of the constraints of COVID are the makings of depression, right? Staying in all the time. Yeah. Uh, time is worthless. You know, uh, you're not going to work. You're, you're, not, you're not seeing people. No right? exercise. No exercise. You know, it's, it's basically, you know, and, and so you're saying, live like a... Um, I'm sure there's people that aren't bathing. They just sit at home all day. Live like a better than depressed person. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, we have got that with depression. So I, I think that, like, you know, if you just flip that and you just say, well, you know, I, I refuse that lifestyle. But I can still stay, stay safe. You know, I can go for a walk around right. residential streets or whatever. Right? I can still wake up early and, and do things and, and sort of, like, you know, uh, live, uh, live as if I, I, I was happy. Maybe yeah. I can, can fight that off. And, I, you know, I, I don't think that, that, that um, my, my friend Vinny has any um, unnatural sort of depressive states. I, I don't think it's something that he suffers from necessarily. It doesn't, it doesn't come across of that yeah. type to me. So, uh, but, you know, this, this goes back to things in Barton's uh, prison experiment, right? You, you put people under certain conditions and they start to act like it. <laughs> um, you know, it's, a, it's, a, it's a sort of natural consequence, right? Um, I don't know. So, I mean, I, I, so, so, I mean, I know that you did the gym for a bit, but, oh, but I, 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 well, leaving the, the house. Open, I've been going to the gym for 25 years. Yeah, but, but are you, are you leaving the house normally? I've been going to the gym for 30 years. I'm, I try to walk every day, oh, okay. but I can't go to the gym because it's closed. I, I did it for four days a week for 30 years. But would you like, then, do you like walk in Fairfax? No, 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 I'll do about, I try to do 10,000 steps. 10,000 steps. Yeah, but, Sometimes I don't get it. Yeah. yeah have, have you found anybody to maybe walk with you? Yeah, yeah people have offered, but no one I want to talk to. Who, who's, who's that? Um, who's that good? That really nice woman that we saw there. See, what's her name? She, uh, she, she's about your age. She, she lives down the street. We see her a few times a year. Is it? She's thin. She's she's a. Uh, she's got sort of like sandy blonde hair. Thin. She's thin. It's thinish. Maybe it's uh, Beverly. No, but anyway, yeah. the, 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 there is there is uh, um, one or something like that. Uh, you know, sometimes I talk on the phone. Sometimes mm. I just listen to the radio. Okay, News radio. Sometimes I listen to music. Mm -hmm. I'm fine not talking to uh, walking at someone else's speed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I mean. I, I decided that whenever I do my sales now, I'm going to be doing, I'm going to walk to the post office. <laughs> instead of taking a bike or a car. Oh, wow. Oh. Well, it's only, it's about the same distance as it is around here. It's about half a mile. You're only a half mile from here? No, from the post office. Oh, from the post office. It's a different post office, of course, yeah. right? But it's, uh, it's, it's about... Yeah, half mile is not very far. No, walking there next about uh, 30 minutes. Yeah, because I always used to walk to the gym. Yeah. It's about 15 minutes in each direction. Yeah, that's about it. Yeah. But I wouldn't drive there. I mean, I did for because I, you know. You had a lot of stuff. No, it's more like I can drive there in five minutes. Yeah. Why not? Um, but you need the exercise. Yeah, the, the, those again. It's it's you know um, how you can spend your time, right? Mm. And um, it, it's we're going to spend it somehow. And so I. I I don't think that I allocate my 24 hours in any kind of valuable yeah, way. Yeah. I mean, I woke up at like noon today, right? Yeah. So if I think to myself, oh, dear Lord, it's going to take a half an hour for me to walk down there and back, and so well, well, come on now. You know, how have you spent your other 23 and a half hours today? Yeah. You know, and I, I don't know, it's this struggle with the uh, relationship at times. Yeah. Right? 
I think we're all going through some of that. Well, yeah, and I, I'm exhausted all the time because I'm not doing anything. Mm -hmm.